Journalist Mehdi Hassan is officially out at MSNBC. The host of the Mehdi Hassan show uh, on for three years announced he was leaving the network this weekend per New Year's New Year New Plans. It's been an absolute blast doing this live show on MSNBC for the past three years with an amazing team of producers behind me and with all of you watching at home. It's been a privilege. It's been a pleasure. But as we begin 2024 with an election coming, a war still ongoing and too many Trump trials, honestly, to even keep track of. And with this show going away, I've decided that it's time for me to look for a new challenge. Tonight is not just my final episode of The Mehdi Hassan Show. It's my last day with MSNBC. Yes, I've decided to leave. To be clear, I am so proud, so, so proud of what we've achieved on this show, on this network. And I can't thank you all enough for tuning in and for your support and for your feedback. But as I say, new year, new plans. You can continue to follow me online at Mehdi R. Hassan on Instagram, on threads, and of course, Twitter or X, where I'll give you updates on what's coming next for me. For now, from me, for one last time on this network, good night. Now, Democratic strategist Walid Shaheed wrote on X that he keeps hearing that this great interview by Mehdi Hassan of Netanyahu advisor Mark Regev is one of the big reasons that his show got canceled, that it was too adversarial, too truthy. Let's take a look at some of that. Look, this operation is not one that we wanted, obviously. This, this war was forced upon Israel in the terrible attack of October 7th, and, and we are fighting back and we will destroy Hamas. We'll dismantle their military machine and we'll take apart their political control of Gaza. That's good for Israel for obvious reasons. We don't have to live in fear of terrorists crossing the border and killing our people, butchering our children in the middle of the night. But it's ultimately also good. And I hope you agree with me. It'll be good for the people of Gaza who deserve better than this terrible authoritarian well, extreme Hamas regime. The people of Gaza are still alive. As I say, more than 11,000 people dead, reported dead, 4,000 children. I just want to pull up on the screen. Hamas. Yeah, Hamas's you say, numbers. You, Hamas's you, say numbers. Hamas's num you say Hamas's numbers. I should point out, just pull up on the screen. In the last two major Gaza conflicts, 2009 and 2014, the Israeli military's death dolls matched Hamas's health ministry death toll. So, and the UN human rights groups all agree that those numbers are credible. Here we have to say something that isn't said enough. Hamas, until now, we're, we're destroying their military machine, and with that, we're eroding their control. But up until now, they've been in control of the Gaza Strip. And as a result, they control all the images coming out of Gaza. Have you seen one picture of a single dead Hamas terrorist in the fighting in Gaza? Not one. Is that yeah, by accident, have, or is that because Hamas Mark, can control, Hamas Mark, can control Mark, the information you, you asked me a question, and you Gaza. said you would be brief. I, have, I haven't. You're right. But I have seen lots of children with my own lying eyes being pulled from the rubble. Uh, because so, they're the you pictures don't... Hamas wants you to see. During the final episode of his show last night, Betty Hassan spoke to Gaza photojournalist Motaz Aziza. Uh, the first message is uh, don't call yourself a free people, a free person, if you can't make changes, if you can't uh, stop a genocide that is, is going still ongoing since the, the first day. We are so close to be a hundred days of, of murdering and genocide. So don't you call yourself a free person if you can't stop someone to kill someone else. Because uh, what I witness here that all the world is, uh, is ruled by a people that uh, no one in the whole world can say no to them or that they can't stop them. So nobody shall call himself a free pay person if he's uh, watching another people, another human being get, getting murdered in front of him. Now, the real question here that's top of mind and that uh, Waleed Shahid was opining on there is why did this happen? What we knew was that his show was getting canceled. There was speculation as to why, given how important his voice has become in the wake of the uh, October 7th and the su subsequent siege on Gaza. Immediately after that conflict erupted, the three most prominent, perhaps 
The three only mainstream news Muslim commentators were sidelined. There was never any explanation given for that. They were ultimately returned to their role. So whether it was that they just all happened to have events that took them away from their desks during that week, whether it was just a coincidence, none of them ever weighed in on very public speculation that they had been deliberately sidelined because their coverage of the siege on Gaza was too sympathetic to the humanitarian interests mm -hmm. of Palestinians. And now it's not just that his show has ended. Remember, the show was ending, but he was planning to co-host and do other things on weekend, weekend shows, still be a part of the MSNBC family. Now he has decided to leave the network entirely, and it's difficult not to read into that a choice that has to do with his substantive politics, especially as we're talking about this in the context of the recent purge of so many pro-Palestine, left-leaning voices from X just last night. Right. Although we have some news on that, they have been, at least many of them, have now been brought back. Uh, Ken Klippenstein, one of the accounts that was taken down, tweeting about it, that he's back, um, and several of the others. I can't confirm right now that they're all back. Um, there's his very amusing tweet. Um, I would still like some clarification for why that well, was. Well, I have some breaking, actually. I actually was DMing uh, Ken as we were setting up for this segment. I asked him, was any insight given into this? He said, to go to his substack, he'll be talking about this in more detail, but here's some breaking from us. What he says was that no reason was given, literally no email, nothing, no terms of service violations cited. It's extremely weird. So we'll I definitely have to follow up to see what, what's going on there. Sure, we'd love to have Ken on. Um, back to Mehdi Hassan, this is going to be another one of those cases where, so I don't know why they got rid of him, obviously. I, don't, my, I do have a lot of objections to Mehdi Hassan. They don't really have to do with his... Palestine, his Gaza coverage, which I've, I've not specifically been following what he has to say about it. I'm sure I disagree with him in places. If he was taken off the air for that reason, I would probably object to that. Um, I, I, I did really dislike his coverage of, of the Twitter files. He's feuding with Matt Taibbi, um, Lee Fong, someone we've had on the show many times, who's not a conservative right-wing lunatic by any stretch of the imagination, um, uh, uh, later called out Mehdi Hassan for getting very basic facts wrong about the way DHS content moderation works. I have also personally clashed with Mehdi, which is, you know, all fair. He yeah, so am disagree I. with me, but well, let me finish. Yeah. On, uh, on COVID specifically, uh, he said that I was a uh, anti-Fauci conspiracy theorist for asking questions um, about the lab leak. Um, he looked very dismissively on people who had to talk about that. So I've not particularly enjoyed his um, his uh, his, his uh, things to say on COVID in particular and on um, the Twitter files. But um, I obviously I think people have the right to disagree and say things I don't like. And he is by far he is you know not the sole voice on MSNBC who has a perspective I don't agree with. And um, right. and I, I don't so, you know I'm not like celebrating him, him being taken off of the air. Or he isn't the sole person at MSC, MSNBC who you disagree with, and me either. I have feuded both publicly and privately with Mehdi Hassan. We were formerly colleagues together at. The intercept and so was, was Lee Fong. Fong. But he is the only person at MSNBC who might be being pushed out now because of his particular beliefs on this particular issue, which is increasingly revealing itself to be the red line in American politics, a line that people like RFK Jr. are not brave enough to cross, a line that people like Tulsi Gabbard, despite all of the hand-wringing and advocacy for being an anti-war candidate, are not willing to cross. And it, it is interesting, Mehdi Hassan, um, just this morning, actually weighed in on the controversy around Elon Musk in a way that might give some insight into where his mind is at. So to be clear, I would, I would fault him for not coming out and specifically telling us what's been going on at MSNBC. His failure to do so, if in fact he feels like he was pushed out for ideological reasons, amounts to running cover for a network that doesn't deserve it. But I, I, I wonder what you make of this. He did tweet this morning about the announcement that uh, Tulsi Gabbard and um, Don Lemon, but specifically Tulsi Gabbard, are, are going to be having these uh, Twitter shows. He tweeted, hilarious that she's announcing this on the exact same day that a bunch of left-wing journalists, remember the left, which she used to be pretend to be a part of, were just suddenly suspended without any explanation or due process by Twitter. I do wonder if that's some clue that he is very sensitive to censorship campaigns against pro-Palestinian voices. And is this a kind of proxy battle he's fighting because he's unwilling or unable to talk explicitly about what's been going on inside the House at MSNBC? Yeah. Again, to be abundantly clear, I don't support him being being taken off the air or censored for any reason for his Israeli coverage um, and so on and so forth. I don't. I. I, I but I 
can recall all of the times he made, you know, he was very much leaning into misinformation being this big crisis, um, social media, Elon not doing enough to take down bad information, very much part of that regime, thinking the Twitter files was a nothing burger, thinking that it revealed actually good developments, that it's, it's good that the government and uh, Twitter are coordinating to take down um, your mistruths about COVID and the election. So, you know, if that's your attitude, you can always be the next one on the chopping block. And I think it's a right, that but it was. it's incumbent on all of us if we actually believe in what we say about free speech. You know, I'm not going to look at a murder victim and say, well, he had bad politics. Do we care about the substantive crime here, which is the censorship that I, I criticize Elon Musk for not holding up his values? Who is going to be the person who, instead of saying, well, I told you so and, well, you did it bad so I can do bad, too, actually stands with their principle at a moment where major journalists last night were censored off Twitter without any explanation. And Mehdi Hassan, one of three Muslim co-anchors at major institutions, is now leaving his show in the midst, days before, days before we have an international court of justice hearing on the question of whether or not Israel is committing a genocide before our eyes. Now, it's also worth noting that one— but, but, but I have to—I look, I totally agree with you, and I'm, I'm not undermining that at all. He gave credence to the Stacey Plaskett concern that uh, he helped create that idea what, that Matt what, Taibbi had what that have lied to, do with to Congress me? and thus should be charged for what, a crime. But what is that? I'm that's, just reminding that's fine, the audience Roddy, of that. But the, the issue before us today is do we want to say Mehdi was a bad person and therefore we don't care well, I don't know that bad censorship person. is allowed to go unchecked or are we going to stand on our values as journalists in this moment? Are we going to stand on our values when over 100 journalists have been killed in Palestine and they feel like they're being targeted for their I think press think Mehdi coverage of censorship issues was itself encouraging of censorship. Okay. He, that be the case, so he should not be a Here's what I want to speak to. One of, the, um, one of these censored parties who had a very large and influential um, uh, account, uh, who appears to be back but has not tweeted yet, um, he uh, provided DMs to others while he was uh, being, uh, to another uh, actually censored account, the true, uh, I think, um, well, the point is that he, he DMed what he thought was the explanation, again, unsubstantiated, but he tweeted, he had been tweeting quite a bit about Bill Ackman's um, attacks on uh, efforts to quiet, to censor any pro-Palestinian speech, to characterize it as anti-Semitism, to get people fired, not just uh, uh, Claudine Gay, much more extensively than Claudine Gay. He's been calling for the doxing of students, preventing them from having uh, jobs and the like, the way I covered on my radar yesterday. Yep. He said, it's LOL, it's definitely Bill Ackman causing the censorship, the, 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 blo um, the banning of people from Twitter. He said, that's actually effing insane. Bill Ackman is going around sending Twitter accounts to Elon of people who exposed him and his wife's Epstein connections to ban. Bill Ackman really is the most deranged. Well, I'll, I'll skip some of the expletives. But that, that he definitely believes, at least, and we'll have to follow up to see if there's any confirmation of this, that the people who were targeted here were specifically targeted because— Bill Ackman, a multi-billionaire, has the level of influence and pull not just to determine who's president of Harvard, but also who gets to be or not be on Twitter. And it's worth noting that someone, one of the other banned accounts also pointed to the idea that it was only advocacy from someone like Glenn Greenwald or some of these other big accounts that have a relationship with Elon Musk that they got returned to the app. So is that a paradigm that we want to be in, that if you have powerful allies on your side, big Twitter accounts on your side, people who have a personal relationship with Elon Musk, then you can have your rights restored to you. But if not, you're just out of luck. I mean, ob yeah, obviously not. And I <laughs> I don't support the cancellation of Mehdi Hassan, even though I believe he would gleefully support me and Matt Taibbi and other people having been taken off Twitter. Um, more rising right after this.